friends so we shall discuss today uh, about one very important aspect of open channel flow that is say so velocity at different point in a flow will always be different but how to tackle that particular issue because when we will do our computational work then we do this as a single velocity in most of the cases now how to tackle that particular problem and similarly uh, say when we talk about pressure at a particular point say we know that when the fluid is in static condition then we know what the pressure is at a particular point but when the fluid will be in motion then whether the pressure at that particular point or at any point will be similar to that of the condition of the static or whether there will be difference so that way the pressure variation within the flow or the velocity variation within the flow is an important aspect and that we will be discussing today well and before going to that particular aspect uh, let me just summarize what we did in our last class re recapitulate of the last class that is uh, say we did about classification of open channel flow and we could see that we can classify open channel flow on different basis say based on variation of the flow parameters with space and time we can do classification then we can do classification variation or based on the Reynolds number of flow that way we classify the flow as a laminar turbulent or between laminar and turbulent like transition we say then we can classify it based on fraud number uh, that is again the classification based on the concept of uh, specific energy and then we do this as say whether the flow is critical flow it is subcritical flow or it is supercritical flow so that way we classify the flow and then uh, we did of course classification based on how we conceptualize the flow that is whether we conceptualize the flow as one dimensional as two dimensional and as three dimensional and, and for what sort of situation we need to consider a flow as one dimensional for what situation we need to take this as two dimensional for what situation we need to take that as three dimensional so those aspects we did discuss we could see that uniform flow steady flow all are different type of flow but in all these sorts of flow in all these sorts of flow one important point is that say when we were talking about uh, velocity we were writing a single velocity term that is say uh, change of velocity or partial variation of velocity with respect to x or distance when we are talking then we were writing it as del v del x or with respect to time del v del t that means we are writing a single velocity term but in a channel in a channel in reality the velocity in the entire section will not be same uh, let us refer to this particular slide see velocity distribution in open channel flow and first let me talk about uh, velocity distribution in a channel cross section suppose this oh let me take a pain here say uh, this is a channel section we are talking about and say this is our channel section and water level is flowing at this height okay now <clears throat> that flow velocity in the entire section will not be same suppose if we draw a velocity contour means line indicating equal velocity if we draw then perhaps we will be getting a line like this that means this line is indicating that velocity along this line will be same and then these are called velocity contour all these lines we are drawing velocity contour here all these lines are basically velocity contour we are drawing okay and this is the channel section okay channel section or we can call this is the boundary channel bed okay and the cross section area of this channel total cross section area of this entire channel section is say a well uh, now let us consider a 
स्मॉल चैनल स्मॉल एलिमेंटरी एरिया से डी ए स्मॉल एलिमेंटरी एरिया डी ए वेल एंड से द फ्लो वेलोसिटी इन दैट स्मॉल एलिमेंटरी एरिया बी वी थ्रू द स्मॉल एलिमेंटरी एरिया बी वी ओके देन when we talk about flow velocity here it is v and if i take another section here another small elementary area then here may be some other velocity it is flowing here it will be another velocity like that here it will be another velocity so at different point the flow velocity will be different and probably it is a common understanding that in a river channel even a river if we observe normally the maximum velocity we get in the middle of the river and when we come to the side the flow velocity decreases and why it is because when the flow is moving on the side very near to the bank the resistance of the bank work and up to certain extents this resistance become more significant similarly from this side similarly from bed so this flow velocity will be of lower level than this flow velocity this will be of higher level this velocity will be high this velocity will be gradually coming lower and lower and here at the bed velocity will be almost negligible so so that sort of velocity distribution we normally get so now when we talk about average velocity say one single term v we are using all the time now what this v can be well so what is the discharge flowing through this elementary area a what will be the discharge flowing through this elementary area a well as the velocity of let me draw a small elementary area here and let me just show it like that say it is moving with a velocity v then as the flow velocity is v so discharge means flow in unit time the quantity of flow that is moving in unit time so in this cylindrical or whatever maybe the shape exact shape but say more or less cylindrical then as the velocity is v then in unit time how much distance this flow will be moving that will be moving through a distance of v that will be moving through a distance of v because the velocity means the distance travel per unit time so in unit time it is moving a distance v and then the sectional area is say da sectional area is da so how much total volume that has passed through this particular portion in unit time that is the basically discharge flowing in time in unit time so that will be that q if i write a small q indicating Uh, that uh, small discharge flowing through this elementary area, or or say I can write dQ also. Say this dQ. That is basically equal to the d. Uh, that is basically equal to v into dA. V into dA. Because this is the volume of this particular uh, cylindrical shape. Uh, may not be exactly cylindrical, but this particular shape. Okay. So this. dq is equal to v into da this mass is the discharge flowing now if i consider that at all these elementary area this sort of discharge is flowing then total discharge flowing through the entire section we can get by integrating it over the area so that total discharge flowing total discharge flowing through the section we can get integrating this area means say integration of over the entire area we can write v d a this v is small v of course we are indicating that this is small v and this is what the total discharge and then uh, we know that discharge is equal to area into velocity q is equal to area into velocity so when we talk in terms of average velocity then we can write that average velocity average velocity average velocity uh, is equal to that q by 
the intersectional area this is what the intersectional area. So, q by intersectional area means we can write that integration of v d a divided by the intersectional area. So, that way we can calculate the average velocity and this is referred as say v mean velocity v m in most of the case we write v m or v average well. So, that way uh, we can calculate the average velocity v m when in reality we have different flow velocity at different point and this aspect is important for different uh, purposes like for calculating energy and calculating momentum ok we will come to that in a later point. But now this sort of velocity variation is uh, in a natural channel, but suppose our channel is very wide very wide like this uh, say it is a very wide channel then what is that uh, influence of these sides will be to some extent up to that much and this much and then if I have the flow depth of this much then we will find that this influence will be very much negligible after certain distance and then we can con consider that the variation of velocity width wise that means say what is the velocity here and here there may not be that much of difference and then we can assume that velocity variation across the section in the lateral direction is say negligible and we can consider that this entire strip is flowing with a velocity v velocity v. However, that the velocity variation in the depth direction cannot be neglected because this bed is in touch with entire water and this this will be significant uh, this will influence the flow velocity and significant change of velocity will be there in the vertical direction. So, in that case we talk about say, velocity variation with depth and here we are not considering that the velocity is varying across the channel also in the lateral direction. Of course, suppose we have a channel like this, suppose we have a channel like this, then when we have a channel like this, we can again just assume it like that. In this portion, our velocity is varying along the depth and across the section say velocity variation is negligible. But along the depth, the velocity variation is there that is here it is suppose larger velocity here it is smaller velocity and in this portion also again we can consider that variation of velocity in the lateral part is small, but there is a variation of velocity here in the vertical direction. Now, what is the basic need of considering three separate section because the variation of velocity in the lateral direction between this portion and that portion that is the velocity average velocity between this portion and that portion or between say uh, this portion and that portion we cannot consider as uh, same or say uh, similar because this will be much lower because the depth is lower the resistance from the bed will be more here the resistance from the bed will be less. So, that way we sometimes consider that uh, vertical velocity of variation we consider and that again part by part here what is the vertical variation and here what is the vertical variation here what is the vertical variation. So, we need to know that uh, velocity is distribution in a vertical section and then let me show you how we consider the velocity variation in a vertical direction vertical section. Well, uh, that of course will vary from section to section, but still uh, some of the typical section we can uh, just observe say uh, this is the velocity diagram if I draw suppose here it is this much and then it is coming down like this. Okay, let me not show the entire surface we are just showing that velocity diagram here. And then what will be the average velocity in this particular part in this particular part say this is depth this mass is y depth this mass is y and 
normally what is done we will find that diffed from here if I come say point 2y suppose 20 percent of the diffed we are considering here and say from here we can consider point 8y and of course we can take at point 6y like that at different point we can measure the velocity okay now the velocity if we measure at point 2y if i just write a notation here that v point 2 meter diffed and if we measure the velocity at point 8 meter diffed and then if we take the average of these two velocity then this we can refer as average velocity that we can refer as average velocity so you can say that average velocity is equal to velocity at point 2 diff plus velocity at point 8 diff divided by 2 many a time uh, it become too lengthy when we take measures in two different section so rather than that we do another way that average velocity is equal to say velocity measured at a depth of 0.6 that is also done in some and many a time again based on the surface velocity what is the velocity at the surface v surface say. we sometimes take a percentage of this surface velocity as the average velocity now it is interesting to note one fact that the velocity at the surface is of course not the maximum velocity generally maximum velocity we get at some lower depth here say velocity is maximum we get maximum velocity not at the surface but at a lower depth and uh, from some observation and experimental observation as well as field observation it was found that maximum velocity we get we get maximum velocity at a depth of at a depth of say 0 0.05 y to 0 0.25 y so at this depth we get the maximum velocity so velocity diagram in if i draw more accurately it will be like that it is coming like that of course uh, this will depend on many other factors like that and if we just consider a narrow channel then you will find that if we consider a narrow channel then you will find that suppose this is the surface and then uh, our velocity diagram will be like this and you can find that maximum velocity is occurring in a more lower portion more lower portion but if it is a wide channel like this it will be more towards surface more towards surface this is more lower this is towards surface like that considering different aspect uh, we can just have some idea where we can have maximum velocity and that way we can uh, just uh, uh, see what should be the average velocity or what we should take as average velocity for our computational work okay uh, well then uh, regarding uh, these velocity variation that we have seen that there will be velocity variation and we can have average velocity uh, we can compute the average velocity uh, in a way uh, but then as we are using this average velocity for our computational work we will always introduce some error in the computational process means computational process means say energy will be required in, com, uh, in many of our computation we will be required to we will be requiring computation of momentum we will be requiring computation of energy and when these are calculated in terms of the average velocity then definitely we are introducing some error in the computation of energy or momentum and when this error will be more when the variation of velocity across the section is very high then this error will be more and in that situation we need to apply some correction to the computed value of energy and momentum well so these 
correction factors, these correction factors that we apply for getting the corrected value of energy and momentum are called energy coefficient or Coriolis coefficient this alpha and for the correction that we apply for momentum that we call as momentum coefficient or Bosonic's coefficient beta. And these coefficients in general we call as velocity coefficient because these coefficients are coming because of variation of velocity. So, we call this as a this as uh, velocity coefficients in general. Well, now let us discuss uh, what we mean by energy coefficient alpha, energy coefficient alpha. Well, then before going to this energy coefficient alpha, let me just explain uh, how we do calculate the kinetic energy. Well, this expression is probably known to all of us that is kinetic energy is equal to half mv square, where m is the mass and this v is the velocity. Again, this velocity we can have average velocity or for a, a small elementary area if we do, we can take individual velocity at that particular point. So, but the expression is half of mass into velocity square. Well, then uh, in case of flowing fluid, what will be the mass? Say mass of a particular uh, quantity, if it is in static, we can say that it is uh, it is total mass is how much? Say uh, we can know, but when the fluid is flowing, then we need to use a term that we call as flux. Basically, suppose what we mean by mass flux what we mean by mass flux? It is the transfer of mass per unit time through an unit area. Say if I consider a unit area, suppose this is unit area, then transfer of mass through this unit area. Say if it is flowing with a velocity v just like that we did drawn earlier, then in unit time the distance travels will be v in unit time and then this is area is also one, area is one say unit mass. So, unit area. So, in unit time means one second suppose through this unit area, well let me write it as unit area. So, through this unit area, uh, how much mass is flowing? What is the total volume flowing? It is the 1 into V, it is the 1 into V. 1 into v is the total volume flowing. Okay. Then what will be the mass? If I multiply it by rho, then it will become the mass. So, mass is equal to, we can say that this is equal to rho v. Well, then how much is the, then, then let me talk about the energy flux. Okay. Energy flux, then that we can describe as transfer of energy per unit time through a unit area. Well, so mass flowing is rho v, mass flowing is rho v, then what will be the energy flowing? So, energy flowing is equal to half of the mass, sorry, energy flowing is equal to half of the mass rho v and v square again a v square half of the mass into v square. So, that is the energy flux, but the energy flowing if now I talk about a small elementary area d a, suppose my area is not unity, but it is d a. Then what will be the mass flowing and what is the energy flowing? That will be, we will have to multiply by d a. So, uh, energy transfer through, through a unit area d, uh, so through a area d a, elementary area d a in unit time maybe per second that we call as energy is equal to half of rho into v into v square into d a. Okay? So, that we can write that energy is equal to energy transfer per second through an elementary area d a we can write as half of rho v cube into d a, half of rho v cube into d a. Well, now that means through this 
small area if I take a section like that as we did discuss through the small area what is the energy flowing that we can have that half of rho v q into d a that we are getting. Then what will be the energy passing through the, the entire section that we can get say energy through the entire section energy is through the entire section of course when we are talking about through the entire section uh, we are talking uh, regarding per unit time per unit time per unit time that is equal to integration of this half of rho v cube into d a integration of this over entire area let me write this energy as say e actual because why i am writing e actual because uh, that we are talking about the energy calculated on the basis of uh, small elementary area where the velocity here may be v here it will be different say v1 like that different velocity will be there at different point and we are considering this variation of velocity and then we are calculating so that we, we are writing this as actual energy actual but now let me take say this area is to tell area is suppose a to tell area to tell area suppose a and the average velocity or mean velocity v m is again q by the to tell area so this is the mean velocity now if i calculate the energy in terms of the average velocity mean velocity then how we can write the energy again the same things that is the energy computed on the basis of say on the basis of mean velocity mean velocity if i do then i can write it that e energy computed on the basis of mean velocity so i am writing e mean say this is equal to uh, half of say rho then i will put here mean velocity v m q half of mean velocity v m q well half of rho into v m cube into the total area as we are integrating the area so that way we can get the e based on the basis of calculated on the basis of mean velocity then if I put this as equation 1 and if I put this as equation 2, then the equation 1 by 2 will give me the value of the energy coefficient alpha. So, energy coefficient alpha we can write as integration of half of rho v cube, this is small v, v cube d a integrated over the entire area divided by half of rho mean velocity cube into the total area okay then this expression we can simplify into suppose we consider that uh, the fluid density remain same in the entire cross section this is not changing that is the flow fluid is incompressible in that case we can just cancel this row we can bring common and uh, outside the integration sign and then we can simplify it in a way that 1 by a then integration of say v cube and here it is v m cube by t a into t a. So, in this form also we can write it is getting cancelled. So, we can write this 1 by a integration of v cube by v m cube into d a. So, this will be the expression for velocity coefficient alpha. So, once we calculate the uh, that means from this what we are finding what basically is alpha representing that it is the e actual divided by e calculated on the basis of mean well so energy coefficient alpha we can write as let me just highlight here energy coefficient alpha we can write as energy calculated actual means based on the different velocity and, and energy calculated on the basis of mean velocity. 
So, when we calculate the energy on the basis of mean velocity, then actual energy we can get as E actual we can get as E actual E is equal to alpha into E mean velocity. And so, we need not bother once we know this alpha value, once we know this alpha value, then we need not bother about the different velocity who are what, what is being flowing. So, if we know the average velocity, then we can very well calculate the energy as half mv square again uh, for the entire area. For the entire area, if we make the energy uh, calculation or energy expression on the basis of average velocity, that we can very well write and then we can multiply this by the alpha value to get the actual velocity. Say for the entire cross section, you know the average velocity, you know the average velocity V m and you know the area sectional area. So, energy flowing per unit time on the basis of entire cross section if we say on the basis of entire section then it will be again half m v square if I write half and mass will be say area into V m that is what the mass flowing and then v, v m square again. So, it is equal to say half of area into V m cube. So, this is what we are getting and then what is the actual will be energy actual with the correction or corrected energy I will write corrected energy E actual is equal to alpha into this part half of A V m cube. So, this way we can use this energy coefficient alpha and then can get the corrected energy. Well, then similarly we can have momentum coefficient. Well, in the momentum also what we mean by momentum? Momentum is nothing but mass into velocity. This is what the mass and this is what the velocity again. Uh, so, momentum transfer per second through an elementary area, momentum transfer per second through an elementary area d a that we can write as say mass will be again, again let me draw this figure here and say this is a small elementary area d a and then what is the volume flowing in unit time that will be the d a into the velocity into the d a if the velocity is v velocity into the into d a multiplied by rho this volume into density that become the mass and then again multiplied by the velocity this become momentum. So, momentum well so this is equal to nothing but rho v square into d a sorry v square rho v square into d a. So, in the similar pattern the velocity also momentum flowing through the entire section if we want to get we can so momentum through the entire section through the entire section this is equal to integration of rho v square d a over the entire area and that we can call as say momentum actual. Okay. And then uh, if I calculate the momentum on the basis of this sectional area a entire sectional area suppose the entire sectional area is a and velocity average velocity average velocity is v m then again I can write that what is the momentum momentum calculated on the basis of mean velocity basis of mean velocity that we can write as again m into v. So, mass flowing is equal to the density into the volume area into velocity v m and again another v m will be coming this part is mass. So, this is equal to like that and that we can write as rho a and v m square. So, this is what the momentum when we calculate in terms of the average velocity. So, again this if I write as equation 1 
and this if I write as equation 2. So, equation 1 by 2 will give me uh, let me rub this part. So, equation 1 by 2 will give me the correction factor 1 by 2 will give me the correction factor which we call as momentum coefficient beta and that is equal to integration of rho v square d a this small v indicating velocity at different point divided by rho capital A v m square. Okay. So, that way we get the expression again here if we consider again here if we consider that uh, this density can be considered as constant considering that uh, it is um, uh, say uh, not compressible the fluid is incompressible then we can write this as rho rho we can cancel and we can write 1 by a and integration of v cube oh, sorry it will be v square I am wrong here it will be v square so integration of v square d a by v m square fine. So, this is how we can calculate this uh, momentum coefficient and uh, earlier we have seen that uh, the velocity coefficient alpha we can calculate and using this velocity coefficient and momentum coefficient similarly here also for finding the actual uh, momentum when we have already calculated it in terms of the average velocity momentum is calculated on the average velocity terms then we can get the actual momentum is equal to let me now change this one and we can write that actual momentum is equal to this momentum coefficient beta into rho a into v m square. So, this way we can calculate it well. Now, so another situation where say suppose a compound channel is there compound channel means it is like that. Okay. So, in this compound channel flow depth is suppose this much and as I was explaining earlier see here variation of velocity may be within this part is variation of velocity in the lateral direction in this part may be not that much significant. So, we can consider that okay, vertically also suppose we can consider that this velocity is suppose v and suppose this is v 1 v 2 and this is v 3. Here we are making some approximation that uh, in this segment in this sub area we are considering a single velocity in this area we are considering a single velocity in this area we are considering a single velocity well now the area here we are marking that this area is say a1 this is a2 this is a3 well then for this sort of area also uh, the, this sort of section rather than going for integration we can do simple summation of this part and we can write an expression for momentum coefficient and velocity coefficient. So, velocity I mean momentum coefficient and energy coefficient. So, say energy coefficient alpha well. So, this alpha is equal to as we know that it can be expressed as 1 by a and integration of v earlier we were writing v mini v average velocity cube separately, but as it is, is constant. So, we can bring it within integration also there is no harm. So, we can write v by v cube this is the elementary velocity or velocity of the elementary uh, area and then d a, but here in our case in a compound channel it will be say v 1, v 2, v 3 like that this one. So, what we can write an area total area is nothing but here say a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 and of course, there can be several segment there can be several segment and we can go up to many segment. Well, then what is the mean velocity say v m what will be the mean velocity here we know that the discharge we can calculate as area into velocity so what will be the total discharge flowing it will be say a 1 v 1 plus a 2 v 2 plus 
A3, V3. These are the say discharge, small discharge Q1, Q2, Q3 like that. Suppose Q1 is the discharge to this part, Q2 is the discharge to this part, Q3 is the discharge to that part. Then this will indicate the summation of Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 and that will give us the total discharge Q. So, this is divided by the entire area A1 plus A2 plus A3. So, this is what is our mean velocity. Now, so this expression alpha we can write directly as say first 1 by for this area we will write as A1 plus A2 plus A3. Okay. And then integration, integration is not required here. So, what we will do? This is the individual velocity cube into the individual small area. So, here our small area is A. So, what we can write say V1 cube into A1 plus we are making summation V2 cube into A2 plus V3 cube into A3. So, this term is being written in this form and then this V is actually nothing but mean velocity. This V is nothing but mean velocity. So, that we can write in this form that is A1 V1 plus A2 V2 plus A3 V3 divided by A1 plus A2 plus A3. But this entire things we need to put under cube because this is V m cube. So, this is we are putting like that. So, finally, what we can write that expression for alpha in a compound channel this A1 A2 A3 is there and there is A1 A2 A3 cube. So, what we can write that this we can write like first let me write this one say V1 cube A1 plus V2 cube A2 plus V3 cube A3 divided by say A1 V1 plus A2 V2 plus A3 V3 and then this will go to the top. So, this we can write as say A1 plus A2 plus A3 whole square. This is getting cancelled and it is remaining square. So, this will be the expression for uh, velocity coefficient alpha in case of compound channel. Similarly, uh, we can have an expression for momentum coefficient also in a simplified way for a compound channel. Well, uh, after getting these different points regarding momentum coefficient and velocity coefficient and we need to know about some values. Well, uh, these are some values, this there is a typing mistake, this should be alpha because of the font and this should be beta, this should be beta. Well, now value of velocity coefficient. Now, it is one point is very much clear that once we know the value of velocity coefficients, whether it is alpha or beta, I mean if we know the alpha value, then by using the average velocity, if we calculate energy, we can get it corrected by multiplying that average, uh, multiplying the energy by that alpha value. So, and similarly, if we calculate the momentum on the basis of the average velocity, then we can get the corrected momentum by multiplying this computed momentum with the beta value. So, we need to know what is alpha and beta and fortunately uh, some scientists conducted experiment and in the books also some standard value for these velocity coefficient are available. You can refer to this slide the value of velocity coefficients okay? and this was originally given by Chao and uh, Hanif Choudhury, he compiled that in uh, 1994 in his book and so I am just putting it from there. There is the type of the channel, say for regular channel, for regular channel you are getting that alpha value varies from 1.10 to 1.2, very close to 1 and beta value varies from 1.03 to 1.07. If it is a natural channel, of course, you can always have question that is natural channel can be again of different type, yes, it can be of different type. But of course, it is a that is why there is a range and you need to have some experience for choosing a value between these range for the natural channel. There will be some differences, but in general say for natural channel, 
we can have it for where the, where the range from 1.15 to 1.5. Similarly, the beta value we can have say 1.05 to 1.17. Then this is a very peculiar case that river under ice cover in a very cold country we can get this sort of situation that varies from 1.2 to 2 the alpha value and the beta value varies from 1.07 to 1.33. Well, then uh, river valley, valley over flooded means with a flood plain when we have a river valley, uh, then suppose in flooding situation uh, this can get over flooded and then we can get typical uh, this compound so channel sort of things also. And for those situation we consider the alpha as varies from 1.5 to 2 and then beta varies from 1.17 to 1.3 and with this value of course this is just to give you give uh, have some idea this is just to have some idea regarding the typical value of alpha and beta and one point is clear from all this value that alpha is always greater than beta and these are always greater than 1 these are always greater than 1 and these condition that alpha is greater than beta this is one aspect then but whether alpha or beta alpha or beta these are always greater than 1. So, what it means what it means because we know that when we calculate uh, that is to get the actual energy flowing through a particular section in per unit time. Uh, this is obtained by the energy calculated on the basis of average velocity then multiplied with this alpha similarly momentum multiplied by beta. So, actual value will be always higher than the computed value actual energy suppose we talk about this will be higher than the value computed on the basis of average velocity. So, this is what is more significant well these are all about the variation of velocity and how we take care by using some correction factor some using by using some coefficients to have the actual energy and actual momentum. Well, after that we are moving on to the pressure distribution in flowing liquid. Well, before that we have already studied what is hydrostatic pressure distribution. Hydrostatic pressure distribution suppose a water depth is here then at any depth y at any depth y our pressure is equal to say rho into g into y that we know very well. And so, it is proportional to the depth hydrostatic pressure is like this here it will be 0 and here it will be suppose total depth based on the total depth the value will be and we can get a pressure distribution like this. Well, now whether in a flowing fluid, whether when the wa water is flowing, whether we will be getting the same pressure distribution that is more important. Well, so, first let us consider a parallel flow on horizontal surface, parallel flow on horizontal surface. Okay. Say this surface is horizontal and we are having a parallel flow means streamlines are parallel and this is going like that. Then pressure at any point will be in fact suppose when we talk about pressure at suppose what will be the pressure from this side and that side. One is that this weight of this is acting at this point and we are getting a pressure that is equal to rho g y. But what will be the pressure from this side and that side if I talk suppose some pressure will be there from this side and that side in this direction. But if it is a horizontal surface and a parallel flow is that is a uniform flow sort of things is flowing like that then pressure from this side and this side will be identical and there will be no significant effect of this pressure on the total pressure. So, we will be getting the pressure as rho g y pressure will be equal to rho g y and if we talk in terms of pressure head if we talk in terms of pressure head as we did discuss earlier it will be say p by rho g. So, it will be y pressure head is y. Well, let me write it fully say rho g y by rho g. So, this will be equal to y. So, that means when the flow is occurring 
on a horizontal surface and flow is parallel then is parallel to the bed then we are getting say pressure head is similar to the or pressure is similar to the static pressure condition. So, that pressure we call as hydrostatic pressure that pressure we call as hydrostatic pressure, but when the channel is not horizontal rather it has a slope like this it has a slope like this and flow is of course, parallel in earlier case it was a horizontal channel and there were no slope. So, here the flow is parallel, but it has a slope it has a slope theta. Then uh, what will be the pressure at any point? Suppose if I talk about this bed and say this is the depth d this is the depth d then if I consider a elementary area d a again if I consider a elementary area d a then what will happen the weight of this liquid weight of this liquid column I am drawing a section I mean taking a section uh, perpendicular to the flow direction. So, this is d say uh, this height is t this height is t I am taking ok depth means uh, it is not exactly depth, but the depth of section if I say depth then this will be vertical ok. Now, this will be weight of this flow fluid will be say d a into d into say d a into d into the mass. So, this will be the mass and then weight is actually rho g rho g rho g and d into d a and this weight will be acting in this direction the weight will be acting in this direction well and then so what will be the force in this direction what will be the force in this direction that angle is also theta so this will be say rho g d cos theta into d a this will be the force acting in this direction. So, what will be the pressure this divided by d a? So, it will be rho g d cos theta into uh, divided by d a this is the area. So, this pressure will be equal to rho g d cos theta. Well, so this is the pressure we are getting in this direction and now if I write it in terms of y say y is the depth suppose y if I take a vertical line this is the depth y and generally for practical purpose what we do we measure the depth because in a particular point where we are standing we talk about the vertical depth. So, we are getting the depth y. So, what will be the value of this d in terms of y because that angle is also ok let me draw a fresh figure if I take this as the y and this as the d then this y d is nothing but equal to y cos theta. So, what we will be getting this we can write in terms of y as rho g y cos square theta ok. So, this will be the expression for pressure at any point and accordingly this y will be varying with different depth we are getting different pressure and we can draw a pressure diagram in that line. But when this theta is very small for a very small value of theta this cos theta become 1 and so cos square theta we can just uh, neglect and then we are getting this is equal to for small value of theta for small value of theta we can have this pressure is equal to rho g y means again it is hydrostatic pressure. Well, so when the theta is small then only we can consider this to be hydrostatic pressure otherwise not otherwise not otherwise we need to multiply it by cross square cos square theta ok. Let me see another case if the flow is occurring uh, in a curvilinear way maybe the flow is suppose this is the channel bed and flow is going like this this is the surface then this sort of flow is occurring or it can be other way also say this is the bed 
this is the bed and the flow is moving like this this can be both way okay now what will be the pressure at any level suppose if i talk at this level what will be the pressure okay uh, as we know okay let me write the pressure head let me write the pressure head at this point suppose this is this depth is y then just hydrostatic pressure will be y first is that hydrostatic pressure will be y hydrostatic pressure will be y now whether this only this hydrostatic pressure will be acting there or something else will be there hydrostatic pressure will be y as we have seen but this flow is not parallel it is moving in a curvilinear way it is moving in a curvilinear way now apart from the this hydrostatic pressure we are getting because of the weight of the fluid weight of the fluid that we have already discussed but apart from the weight of the fluid here another force is acting here another force is acting when something is moving in a curvilinear way then this fluid is subjected to one acceleration this fluid is subjected to one acceleration and that we call that centrifugal acceleration and suppose if it is moving with a velocity v if it is moving with a velocity v then it will be that centrifugal acceleration will be equal to say v square by r what is that r it is v square by r this r is the radius of curvature in what what is the curvature of this particular flow path this is what the acceleration and we know that how much at this point this part of flow is moving so what is the mass that if we see then we can write that suppose this small area is d a then force additional force what is acting is equal to force is equal to mass into acceleration that is extra acceleration whatever we have the earlier force we got due to gravitational acceleration but this is due to the curvilinear flow so this is equal to you can write say rho into this if delta a is the area rho into delta a into y this is the volume and this is y this is the mass multiplied by the density so we are getting mass into say v square by r so this expression we are getting for this extra additional force now this force when the flow is in a convex way then it will be acting in the downward direction when the flow is over a concave phase concave channel then it will be in the outward direction it will be in the outward direction so this we can write as that is why this we can write as this force is equal to mass into acceleration and then you can put a plus minus sign we can put a plus minus sign because it can be plus or it can be minus fine well then from this here if we say uh, this is the force then pressure will be we will have to divide it by the area so it will be uh, pressure is equal to we can write pressure is equal to force by area pressure is equal to force by area well so this we can write as if we divide this term by area this will become rho y then v square by r rho y v square by r fine and then when we write in terms of head head is equal to again pressure head pressure head will be equal to pressure head is equal to say per unit weight so unit weight means we need to divide it by rho g so it will be rho y v square by r divided by rho g so this rho rho getting cancel y by g v square by r so this will be a additional pressure now if we combine this and that now let me combine this pressure hydrostatic pressure which is coming due to weight of the fluid and then this pressure okay that let me write 
it more clearly that this is equal to say y into v square by g into r this we can write like that. So, if I combine this and that then we are getting two tail head is equal to y I am bringing this y and y common. So, this remain 1 this is mean this y for hydrostatic and then v square by g r this is for this centrifugal force. So, that way for a curvilinear flow we can get this total head in this expression that is y is equal to 1 plus minus v square by g r. So, in in our various computational work when the flow is moving in a curvilinear way. It is not necessary that always we will have to have a curvilinear path like this, I mean curvilinear channel like this. Sometimes we can have in a straight channel also, suppose there is a fall as I was drawing and water is falling like this, then this part there is a curvature and so the hydrostatic pressure cannot be considered here or if we consider the hydrostatic, hydrostatic pressure that means we are making some assumption and there is a scope of error. So, if we become clear about that part then we can go ahead we are knowing that what mistake or what sort of error can be introduced here. Well, with this uh, uh, let me conclude this discussion uh, so today we have discussed about say how we can uh, make use some correction factor for taking care of the variation of velocity within the flow section and then of course, we have discussed how the pressure in the flowing fluid can be different from the hydrostatic pressure. Of course, for some of the very simple situation of parallel flow we can consider hydrostatic pressure, but for curvilinear flow for a flow in a very steep channel the pressure is not exactly like that of hydrostatic pressure we need to make some correction there. So, with all this basic information of open channel flow we hope we will be able to go in the next class for discussing the governing equation how this flow now can be expressed in terms of some equation. Well, thank you very much hope to meet you in the next class thanks.